Okay, this video is for you if you want your student to make better use of the resources they have available to help them. Okay, first one, remind students of those resources. It is not enough to tell them, oh, well, when you get stuck, you can do A, B, or C on the first day of class. You can tell them that on the first day of class, but you gotta keep reminding them. And it's frustrating because I'm like, oh, really? I should spend 30 seconds every lecture as a college faculty member reminding them? But yes, yes, I should. Because you need to remind them when they need that help. Also, it helps sort of normalize it. Like, well, I know you're going to get stuck. I know you're going to need help. That's just part of the process. So let me remind you what those resources are. Number two, really, really celebrate it when you make mistakes during class. Okay, really embrace those. Be like, oh, no one writes programs that work the first time. And so it's great that I have a bug in the code that I just wrote while I was live coding in class. So now we get to work on it together and debug it together. Okay, really show that as like an opportunity for you and the class. Okay, three, hold your office hours or your help sessions in public places. Okay, so think about like, oh, you know, if a student comes to my office hours, they're like, knock, knock, knock. Oh, I feel like I'm interrupting you. It's, it's obviously my space. So what I do is I hold them in coffee shops or in libraries or in computer labs where students are just there. They might get there 30 minutes before I show up for my office hours. They might stay an hour after I have my office hours. So then it doesn't really matter when I get there. And then I'm entering their space. They don't have to feel like they're imposing upon me. Number four. Students are gonna be better off and have more access to help if they get to collaborate. And so make sure you pr uh, provide explicit structured ways for students to collaborate. So maybe on the first assignment, you assign them to a partner and they might not love working with that partner, but that can be uh, helpful to provide that structure to get them going and collaborating, making sure that they have people in the class that they know. Number five encourage a growth mindset. A growth mindset is the idea that your intelligence isn't fixed. It's something that grows with practice and experience. Okay, so that's, students are going to um, pursue much more effective learning strategies if they have that growth mindset. So remind that, and that can be in responding to mistakes that you make, that can be responding to mistakes they make. You know, I find if students don't know something, it's that they don't know it yet, not that they'll never learn it. So I think that yet keyword is really important to promoting the growth mindset. Number six, <laughs> uh, I like to use Piazza for Q&A online. It allows students to ask questions anonymously, which I think is super important. I want to create an environment where everyone feels super comfortable being open about what they don't understand and they don't know it yet and a growth mindset, yada, yada, yada. But I'm never going to be completely successful. So I think it's really helpful to pick a tool that allows students to ask questions anonymously. It gives them better access to support. Last, number seven, is email students with low grades. If the students don't turn in their homework assignment, make a little mail merge. It's like, oh, if you got a zero on this homework assignment, I'm going to zip off an email to you that says like, oh, hey, how's it going? Wonder if things are going okay. Do you want to meet? Uh, so sending, prompting students can let them know that you care and try and help them get back on track. Good luck encouraging students to seek help.